Law 29. Plan all the way to the end. The ending is everything. Plan all the way to it. Taking into account all the possible consequences, obstacles and twists of fortune that might reverse your hard work and give the glory to others. By planning to the end you will not be overwhelmed by circumstances and you will know when to stop. Gently guide fortune and help determine the future by thinking far ahead. There are very few men and they are the exceptions who are able to think and feel beyond the present moment. Karl von Clausewitz. This law is about patience. This law is about thinking ahead, having foresight, being tactical, being intelligent, and being in control of your emotions within chaos. Something many young men and women, old men and women, struggle with today. Because most men are ruled by the heart, not the head. Their plans are vague, and when they meet obstacles, they improvise. But improvisation will only bring you as far as the next crisis, and is never a substitute for thinking several steps ahead and planning it to the end. I won't recite the whole transgression of the law story because it's too long, but the point is, there was this young, noble, bold Spaniard named Balboa. He was in search of gold. He went to the ends of the earth, he attained a lot of power, and by the end, he died, he had his head cut off because he let emotion cloud his judgement and he searched for gold and riches, he couldn't see the people deceiving him next to him. He was always reacting emotionally instead of never thinking ahead. And that is not unlike today when we will be on our own search for gold and riches of our own. Maybe not physical gold? but riches, but conquering certain things and we can be blinded, as Balboa did. There is a simple reason why most men never know when to come off the attack. They form no concrete idea of their goal. Once they achieve victory, they only hunger for more. To stop, to aim for a goal, and then to keep to it seems almost inhuman. In fact, yet nothing is more critical to the maintenance of power person who goes too far in his triumphs creates a reaction that inevitably leads to de a decline. The only solution is to plan for the long term. Foresee the future with as much clarity as the gods on Mount Olympus who look through the clouds and see the ends of all things. It's very easy to go on the offense and attack and attack and attack and be aggressive. In the very first video I made, I talk about that. But on the flip side right here, you have to know when to come off the attack. You have to know when to be more premeditated. You have to know when to be patient and plan out. If you're a type A personality, if you're, if you're the type of person who watch these videos, you probably have a hunger, a hunger for more, a hunger for knowledge, a hunger for wealth, a hunger for happiness, a hunger for a better life. Once we achieve that certain hunger, which is what Rob is trying to say, to stop, to aim, for a goal and keep to it is something not often done because we're always going from one thing to another but you'll see them the biggest influences in the world are the are the stone cutters that are persistent and hammer away the piece of rock a thousand times without a crack showing but then on the thousand first try it splits keys to power you know, the ancient Greek gods were thought to have a vision for the future, a complete vision of the future, and they would be able to see every intricate detail. And while men were compared victims of this fate, they were trapped in their moments and their emotions, unable to see beyond their immediate dangers. But we can be like gods, we can be like them, instead of the average person, because those among us who think further ahead and patiently bring their plans to fruition who seem to have like godlike power, because most people are too imprisoned in the moment to plan with this kind of foresight. The ability to ignore immediate dangers and pleasures translates into power, translates into intelligence, translates into success. It is the power of being able to overcome the natural human tendency to react to things as they happen, and instead to train oneself to step back, imagining the larger things taking shape beyond one's immediate vision, stepping back, assessing, observing, and then making a move. Most people believe that they are in fact aware of the future, that they are planning and thinking ahead, but they are usually deluded. What they are really doing is succumbing to their desires, to what they want, 
the future to be. Their plans are vague, based on their imaginations rather than their reality. They may believe they are thinking all the way to the end, but they are really only focusing on the happy ending and deluding themselves by the strength of their desire. Be self-aware to know the difference. Because it can be easy to be clouded between the two. Understand the difference. Listen carefully to this, because I had to read it a couple of times to comprehend it properly. The most ordinary cause of people's mistakes is their being too much frightened at the present danger, and not enough so at that which is remote. Dangers which are remote are ones that loom in the distance. If we can see them as they take shape, how many mistakes we avoid, how many plans we would instantly abort if we realized we were avoiding a small danger only to step into a larger one. So much of power is not what you do, but what you do not do. Plan in detail before you act. Do not let vague plans lead you into trouble. Will this have unintended consequences? Will I stare up new enemies? Will someone else take advantage of my labors? Ask those questions. Because unhappy endings are much more common than happy ones. Do not be swayed by the happy endings in your mind. Do not let that cloud your judgment. When you see several steps ahead and plan your moves all the way to the end, you will no longer be tempted by emotion or desire to improvise. Your clarity will rid you of the anxiety and vagueness that are the primary reasons why so many fail to conclude their actions successfully. You see the ending and you tolerate no deviation. Image. The gods on Mount Olympus looking down on the human actions from the clouds. They see in advance the endings of all the great dreams that lead to disaster and tragedy, and they laugh at our inability to see beyond the moment and how we delude ourselves. Reversal. It is a cliche among strategists that your plan must include alternatives and have a degree of flexibility. That is certainly true. If you are locked into a plan too rigidly, you will be unable to deal with the sudden shifts of fortune. Once you have examined the future possibilities and decided on your target, you must build in alternatives and be open to new routes towards your goal. Most people, however, lose less from overplanning and rigidity than from vagueness and a tendency to improvise constantly in the face of circumstance. There is no real purpose in contemplating a reversal to this law, then for no good can come from refusing to think far into the future and planning to the end. If you are clear and far thinking enough, you will understand that the future is uncertain and that you must be open to adaptation. Only having a clear objective and a far reaching plan allows you that freedom. Law 29, plan all the way to the end.